We are going to check in uh, the Jacksonville area, which that's a real area of concern still, because as the governor was saying earlier in a live press conference, that, you know, that is an area that he's truly concerned about. Yeah, this isn't over yet. The storm continues moving north, making its way past Daytona Beach towards Jacksonville. And that's where our Candace McCowan joins us from now live. Things there, Candace, expected to get worse over the next few hours. Gene Gale, I tell you, it's really picked up here just in the past 20 minutes or so. The wind is really blowing, and I'm actually underneath this little hut here. It's actually a mail facility, and thankfully so, because every so often we hear something thud into the roof here, and better than that being my head if we're standing for not underneath this thing here. But they are expecting, we're right here on the Intracoastal Waterway, expecting a storm surge of six to nine feet. So people here really worried about their homes. We were talking to these folks over here as they are loading up. They already evacuated. Came back this morning. They're checking on their homes. I understand that they are staying about 25, 30 miles inland. Um, but yeah, they're just checking on their home. They haven't boarded anything up, but the big concern for them is that water. There's not much you can do to stop it when you live this close to the water. Again, here along the Intracoastal Waterway. And if you take a look over here, bring you around over here, this is a sea marsh, all expected to be covered later on today. Again, the heaviest part of this storm not coming until 2 o'clock this afternoon is when it'll hit this area. I know in St. John's County, just south of here, they've already said, hey, we're done rescuing people. We've given you your warnings, so don't complain when we don't come get you. We've given you plenty of warnings, and I know that people in the past, they've said, hey, we're complaining about the response times after these disasters, but first responders are saying, hey, we've got to stay safe as well. Um, so really urging people at this point to hunker down and stay safe as you can because they say it could be 72 hours, maybe Saturday at the earliest before they can it gets to them. So again, people really, I'm telling you, you have to stay undercover at this point. Otherwise, you'll get hit in the head with something and you will need those first responders and who knows if they can really get to you at this time. Jean, Gail. Sure. And has that been the experience that, you know, what you've seen? Are people out and about or have they stayed indoors or evacuated as was asked of them? You know, this morning I've seen multiple people who've come up to me and said, hey, we're getting out of here. You know, we're done. We've been watching this. Um, so they are taking it seriously. They know, um, especially where we are, we're close to the water here. They know how serious this is. And that's really what officials are urging them to do. Just take it seriously. Get, go in inland. You know, what's the harm in doing that at this point? You know, this is just stuff you can't get your life back. So a lot of people seem like this morning they are taking it seriously. Well, you know, they've been saying in the Jacksonville area that this is the storm of a generation. Mm -hmm. That area hasn't seen anything of this magnitude in a really long time. And we don't don't know exactly what's going to happen. It's very unpredictable. There have been times that we thought Hurricane Matthew was going to slow down when actually it was, you know, hanging on to winds of up to 120 miles per hour, Candace. Yeah. But perhaps they waited Absolutely, a little too long. Absolutely, and this could shift at any moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perhaps they yeah, waited a little too long. Yeah, this could shift at any it... moment, and so a lot of people watching this. All right. Uh, as are we. Candace, thank you. Uh, you know,